Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the second scripture reading that Pastor Welmer just read for you. I share with you today at verse 8. The Apostle James is speaking and he says to the Christians, Be patient. The coming of the Lord is at hand. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Well, a man was once invited to a wedding reception. He re arrived late. He didn't know anyone there except for the friend who invited him. So he decided he would just sit in the back and just watch everything take place. And so he watched. And he saw the people as they danced and shouted and sang and laughed together. He saw the people eat a lot of food and drink a lot of drink. And then he happened, as he looked over at the side, he saw a young lady sitting there all by herself in the corner. Now, he, she looked kind of happy, but no one seemed to be talking to her. So the man went up to his friend and said, who is that young lady over there sitting by herself in the corner? And his friend, looking surprised, said, Don't you know who that is? Let me introduce you. That young lady is the bride. Wow. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a bride sitting all by herself at her own wedding reception? Well, that is how Jesus must feel every year at Christmas time. Most all of the celebration we have at Christmas time, the music and the lights and the gift giving, it has very little to do with Christmas, does it? It has very little to do with Jesus. But we really need Jesus. We really need Jesus to help us with sin and death. We really need Jesus to give us some hope for our lives on this earth. I mean, isn't that why Christmas took place years ago? We all really need Jesus because life on this earth is not easy. Life on this earth, as we know, has many times of suffering, has many struggles. There was a funny story that came out of John F. Kennedy's presidential campaign back in 1960. Kennedy had just delivered a great speech in San Antonio in front of the Alamo, where a group of men held off the Mexican army for a while before they all died. And after Kennedy's speech was over, he wanted to make a quick exit, so he turned to his aide who was standing next to him and he said, let's get out of here. Where is the back door? And the aide looked up at him and said, sir, if there had been a back door at the Alamo, then there wouldn't have been any heroes. Well, he was right. But you know what? We wish our lives on this earth had some back doors, don't we? We wish that because life can get difficult at times. We wish we could make a quick escape. Well, here in the Word of God before us today, the Apostle James knew what was going on in the Christians living in that day wasn't that long after Jesus had risen from the dead and it was very difficult to be a Christian in that day. And that's why James knew the people were suffering and they were having lots of struggles and he spoke these words to us today. Be patient because the Lord is coming soon. Be patient because the Lord is is going to help you with sin and death. During this Christmas time of year, our society 
tells us to be happy, right? I mean, just think of all the commercials we see on television today. Every one of them are trying to encourage us to be really excited and happy. But everyone's not happy, are they? Many people are going through some tough times. Some people have lost loved ones. Some people are out of work. Some people are going through some very serious illnesses. It's not easy to live here on this earth. And that's why we all need Jesus. Christmas is all about hope. Hope came into the lives of all people when Jesus was born on this earth. Hope came into the lives of all people when Jesus later died on a cross and then rose from the dead. Hope came into the lives of all people when Jesus was willing to forgive all of our sins. When he was willing to overcome the fear of death and give to all of us the gift of eternal life in heaven. Christmas is all about this hope in Jesus. A pastor once told about a church sign that he drove by nearly every day. This is what the church sign said. Little Hope Baptist Church. Now the pastor looked at that sign and he thought, why would a Christian church talk about Little Hope? Doesn't make sense. Christians should have big hope. Well, the pastor decided he was going to go and talk to the pastor of this little church. And so he went by, and when he went and talked to the pastor, he found out that this little church had to, was doing some pretty good things. This little church was helping many people in need in their community, and they were supporting several missionaries overseas. And the minister came to find out that this really was a big hope church. It was a big hope church with a little hope sign. You know, Jesus was born in a little hope part of the world, in a little hope town called Bethlehem. Jesus was born in a little hope stable with little hope animals all around. Jesus had little hope shepherds come to see, see him. But everyone who came to see Jesus found big hope. Big hope in someone who could help them with sin and death. You see, there was a lot of big hope in this little hope beginning. Big hope of a savior from sin and death. A woman once talked about a conflict that was going on between her husband and her son over a piece of property. Now, it was a very valuable piece of property. And the father had put this property in his will to his son after he died. Well, the son wanted the property right now. When the father refused to give it to him right now, the son broke off all relationships with his father. He ended up leaving home and he never talked to his father. Until one Christmas, his mother asked him to please come home for Christmas. He grudgingly agreed to come, but he said, I'm not going to talk to dad. On Christmas Eve, he opened up all of his Christmas presents, that is all except one. One of the presents under the tree was from his father. It was in a tie-shaped box, and it had a note on it that said, To my beloved son, Dad. The son never opened the gift. He probably thought it was some kind of tie or something since it was in a tie box. But inside this tie box, was the deed to that valuable piece of property that the son wanted. Here, the father wanted to give his son a great Christmas gift, but he never opened up the gift. 
this son now owned a valuable piece of property. But he didn't know it since he never opened up the gift from his father. You know, there are many, many people who make this same mistake every year at Christmas. God offers them a valuable gift in the birth of his son Jesus here on this earth. But so many people, they just won't open up the gift. So many people refuse to accept Jesus as their savior from sin and death. And how sad that is. Because so many people are losing valuable hope for their lives. So many people are using valuable joy for their lives. God is giving to you and me a very valuable gift again this Christmas. Be sure to open the gift. You'll be glad you did. You'll find real hope and joy in your Savior. And be sure to share this valuable gift with others around you because there are a lot of people around us who are truly hurting and are seeing very little hope in their lives. Let's share this valuable gift of Jesus with them. And God bless us as we do. Amen. Please now rise as we join together in the next song of praise.